This is a little bit of a test. As you can see, it's snowy everywhere. Everything's wet, everything's covered in snow, even the IKEA cooker is full of snow and crap. These are little dollar store fire lighters. They're basically wax uh, and paraf paraffin wax impregnated um, sawdust blocks. You see? Now I rate them, I think they're pretty good, but I've never tried one on soaking wet ground with cold, damp, wet sticks. So what I'm gonna do is, I've lit the block, let it get going, and then you see all these, these wet twigs covered in snow, yet yeah, I'm gonna try and get a fire going with those. So, let's see okay, what so, we can do. I broke up the little sticks, just tapped off as much snow as I could get off. I didn't rub them, so they're still wet, they've still got snow on them. And as you can see, there's smoke, and there's the beginnings of a flame. Like I said, if you want to see, there's the fire pit, all right, full of snow and crap. I really haven't been down here as much as I should have been, but hey, what can you do? This is just an experiment to see if those fire lighters will do the job because a few of those in your backpack take up no space at all and rather than on a day like this where it's snowing and blowing and miserable you don't want to piss about with sparks and bushcraft fire lighting that's all very well it's great fun to do but what you need is a flame and you need a fire fast so those um those little fire lighters like i said a couple of them in your backpack is an emergency Look what we're getting. So that's now starting to take. Wasn't very long, was it? And what I should do is I shall unearth some of these um, previously burnt sticks now, uh, knock off as much snow as I can, and start to build the fire. I won't bore you to death by showing you that whole process, but I'll bring you back in a bit. But as you can see, it's actually coming on quite well. Right, I'm pretty sure you can hear that, but here you can see there's uh, <laughs> ice pellets coming down. I'm just under the, let me just show you where I am. Okay, I'm just under the tight wad tarp there, give me a bit of shelter, doing the fire thing, like I said. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, we've got the ice pellets coming in, not sure if you can actually pick them up on this camera. But, <laughs> they're not going to help me little fire any, but, well we'll see, got the old uh, outdoor lip hammock, got the uh, undery quilt, I won't be sleeping in it tonight, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to sleep in it tonight, too bloody cold and I've got too much to do, but I have come down for a play with the fire lighters and wet wood, Everything's soaking, and we are still getting a flame coming in. Let's try and zoom me out. It. I can't believe it. Absolutely can't believe it. Oh well. The dog's trying to help now by stealing logs. What a pillar. Later. <laughs> no camera tricks. I've <laughs> I've put ridiculously large sticks on there. Okay, they're about an inch and a half across. Like I said, this is a torture test, and if it fails, it fails. If it works, it works. That's what a test is all about, but like I said, it's cold, it's miserable, and anyone in this situation is going to want to fire as fast as possible, so they're probably not going to adhere strictly to all the rules of fire making. They're going to rush it. So that's exactly what I've done. I've rushed it. Now I've got smoke. I can't believe it. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Almost no preparation. All the sticks have been picked up off the ground. There's no dry sticks, um, nothing prepared, no shavings, no whatever. I am going to see if that one firelighty thing can actually get a fire going. And so far, it's amazing. I can actually see flames. <laughs> I don't believe it. Can I get into there? 
But it's incredible. One little tab stuck straight on the damp earth. Hmm. Oh well. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Talk about bloody L Baldrick. Right? Look at that. Now, all I did, you saw it just a couple of seconds ago. Literally, I'm surrounded by uh, the old birchy trees here, look. So all I did was I tore a few of these rough bits off, put them underneath the logs, and boom! Look at that. Huh. So there you go. It can be done. Wet, soggy sticks, covered in snow, while it's still snowing. <laughs> and you can see the black soot coming out from the uh, bark. Well, I've got a fire. I've got a fire. Now from that, I don't care what kind of outdoorsman you are, if you can't keep a fire like that going, you shouldn't be outdoors, all right? So I have lit that fire in the worst of conditions, literally one light, fire lighter, and then added to it, right? And as you can see, the birch bark's burning down now, but that's put heat into the fire. So what I'm gonna do is add more. Little six, keep it going. Instead of a break in the clouds there, uh, how we get on with the fire. There you go. Literally broken every rule in the book. See the gaps? That's where I've pulled logs out of the snow, broke them, bashed off snow, put them straight on. Tore more birch bark down, some dead twigs from over there, put them on. And I've got to tell you look, no gloves, see how pink them hands are? No gloves, no knife. No cheats, no nothing, just one light on that fire lighter and this. Here we go. Watch the, uh, the world's most badly built fire burning. It's about oh, three quarters of an hour after I started. Has it been a pain in the ass to keep going? Yes. Has it been easy? No. Was it built well? No. There's lots of birch bark helping, there's sticks of burning. I've had to fan it a few times. No, it's not easy to get a fire going in these conditions with the bare minimum of prep. That's the point. If you needed to, could you do it? There's lots and lots of, um, what should we call them now? Armchair bushcrafters. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be mean, I'm going to say it. Armchair bushcrafters, watch a few YouTubes on video, buy themselves a ferro rod, add bushcraft to the name of their channel, and then they're invincible. They buy a nice little axe, they, they do some batoning, right? I didn't do any batoning, there's no knife, I've got no knife, what can you say? Um, but it's very, very easy to go out on a nice sunny day, when you're ready for it with, with a rucksack full of kit and a crazy dog and get yourself a fire going, have a cup of tea in the woods, film it and then say, look at me, I'm a bushcrafter, right? It's bollocks. To be fair, any fool can do that. Ten-year-old Boy Scouts are doing it all the time. But what can you do when you're not ready for it? That's the difference. If you needed a fire in a hurry, in crappy weather, okay, with nothing but wet sticks, with no knife, no prep, you've got, what have I got on me? I've got a lighter, and I had one of those little tiny fire lighting blocks, which is about an inch and a half square by half inch thick. I've got a fire going, all right? It's not the best fire in the world. I have to keep going at it to keep it going. But the thing is, that is a fire. I'm not freezing cold. My hands have actually, well, they still look red, but they're actually warmer now. All right, now look, see? Now there's a hole in it. Push your fire into the hole. Get the embers going again. Because once you get a hole in your fire, your heat base is lost. Yeah, I don't see now it's starting to pick up again. You've got to know the basics of fire lighting if you want to call yourself an outdoorsman. 
And like I said, this isn't the best fire in the world. Put together with crappy sticks. Now I'm letting it, gonna, I'm going to try and let that go out now. See that last little bit of flame dying? If you let it get to that stage, you're a prat. What you should do, because I'm, I'm not staying in now, I'm going to let that go out. But what you should do is, you should keep feeding it, keep moving it, keep pushing it. If you have to feed that thing with birch bark all night long, do it. Never ever let your fire get to this stage where it's just embers again. Always keep it running, always keep it warm, because it's easier to keep a hot fire going than a cold one. All right, so what have I proved today, apart from the pattern of a pillock standing out in the snow? Yes, the world's worst prepared fire can get it going. You can have it raging and roaring. You can cook yourself something. You can melt some snow for a hot drink. <sighs> you can stand under Mr. Tightwad's tarp next to Outdoor Lips hammock in a bad storm. All right, it's bloody cold out here. But the thing is, don't call yourself a bushcrafter. Buy a ferro rod, watch a YouTube video and piss off into the woods hoping that you're going to be okay. Because you know what? A little knowledge is a bad, bad thing. Okay? Confidence? Yeah, have confidence by all means. But a little knowledge is a bad thing. Now I'm only down the end of the garden, see? So it doesn't really matter what happens here. But the fact is, I can get a fire going. So, while we're like this, crappy weather, if I needed to, I can stay warm, I can get a fire going. Oh, so I'm letting that go out now because I'm not staying out here for you lot. <laughs> so while I walk back to my little house, just want to do a couple of shout outs for some channels out there. Mr. Ginger Bruce, Wild Ginger Bruce. If you've not seen his channel, go and find it. He does some lovely little videos. They're actually worth watching, unlike mine. They're actually worth watching. And he's always willing to explore I'm just checking that the fire's actually gone out. <laughs> I don't want it to rear up again. No, it's gone. I think so anyway. I'll check that in a half an hour. Um, yes, Wild Ginger Bruce. Go and check him out. There's some other channels out there as well that do nice things. If you want a channel that does ferro rods and things, go and see Mr. Scooty1968. Go find him. And then there are other little channels that support the team and usually they're under the MTFU logo the man the EF up logo and what they are is a, a big group of mad people who have got a big heart shared between them so we're doing a giveaway at the moment or rather Mr Bruce is doing a giveaway and if you mention him if you do a VR for Mr Bruce wild ginger Bruce he will give away a bunch of kit now, if, like me, you've already got a bunch of kit and you don't need any more kit, in fact, all I needed was a, a lighter and a fire lighter down there, uh, then, by all means, feel free to donate the kit to someone who's just starting out in bushcraft or just starting out getting outdoors. So there we are. I don't need the kit. I don't want the kit. So if my name gets pulled... Oh, holding the ground there. If my name does get pulled out, then what I want to do is donate my kit to someone who's just getting started. I'll go and find a channel with less than 100 subs, see what they're all about, and then send the gear off to them. So there we are. Right, it's cold. I'm away from that fire now. That's, <laughs> it makes a hell of a difference, I tell you. That poxy little fire. Here's my road. Just checking. Uh, yeah, no, no traffic. Uh, no traffic. Okay. Snow coming down, yes. Me going in, yes. Dog, what are you doing in the middle of the road, stupid? Come on. <laughs> anyway, there you go. A fire. The worst fire ever. Yes, we got it going. So, there you go. Carry some emergency stuff.